Recently on the channel, we spoke on some of the times that you, ostensibly the hero of the video game you're playing, did something to your enemy so terrible that a swift death would seem like a real treat by comparison. And lots of you, the outside Xbox viewers, had your own examples of terrible, terrible things you'd done in the name of video game heroism. So many, in fact, that it's time for a rundown of our favourite suggestions from the comments. Buckle up for more times that you, the hero, gave your enemies a fate worse than death. Enjoy! Hello? As horrible fates worse than death go, Carl Semkin from first-person survival horror game Soma already ranks extremely high. Carl is technically dead as his body has died, but his brain scan was uploaded into a busted robot you encounter in the Upsilon section of the Pathos 2 underwater research station. And this robot is 100% convinced that it is the real, alive Carl Semkin. What are you? Are you blind? It's me, Carl. Carl Semkin. Wrangler? Any of this sound familiar to you? So as you can see, this is already arguably worse than being dead. However, you can make things considerably worse by adding being electrocuted for all eternity into the mix. Fun! To get past this bit in Soma, you need to redirect power to the communication center in order to access it. There are two ways of doing this. One, you can flip a lever in the flow control room, which is a bit further away, and which opens a hatch to the lower levels, letting a killer robot up here, which makes things a lot harder. On the plus side, this shuts down Carl's robot in the process, thereby effectively killing him and releasing him from his robot prison for good. Or if you prefer, you can do it the easy way, which is by flipping this lever next to Carl, which redirects the power immediately, sends no killer robots after you, and also sends a good chunk of that power directly into his brain. And that goes on forever, I guess? Sorry, Carl, it was this or be slightly inconvenienced, and I'm a busy guy. You get it. A new character for Mortal Kombat 11, Geras, is immortal, which is useful considering that, you know, he's a character in a Mortal Kombat game. As such, it is impossible to kill Geras, but that doesn't mean you can't do something much, much worse to him. And indeed, something much, much worse does happen to him in the game's story mode when you're playing as Raiden. I have died a thousand deaths to prepare for this battle. My defeat is impossible. Yours, inevitable. Defeat Garrus in this story battle, and Raiden will decide that he's had enough of Garrus' nonsense. I will suffer you no more. He then wraps him in a giant heavy chain attached to an anchor, which he then throws into the Sea of Blood. Drowning cannot kill me, Raiden. That is unfortunate for you. The Sea of Blood is bottomless. You will fall forever. The good news for Garrus is that if he drowns, he'll simply resurrect. The bad news for Garrus is that the Sea of Blood is bottomless, meaning that he will simply sink forever, drowning over and over again for the rest of time. Which, yeah, is worse than getting killed. And this is a Mortal Kombat game where getting killed is so bad, I can't show you any of it or this video would be demonetized. Anyway, here's a friendship. You recall Garion Alexius of the Winter. Ferelden has given him to us as an acknowledgement of your aid. In Dragon Age Inquisition, you play as the Inquisitor and are given power to judge people and decide their fates at Skyhold, an old-timey court that doesn't even have a moon door for booting people out of. As such, you have to come up with other punishments for those seeking judgment, one of which is a fate decidedly crueler than death if used on the right person. As an example, we look to the case of Magister Gerion Alexius, former mentor of Party Mage Dorian, and now in the dock for the crime of... Let me see here. Trying to kill the Inquisitor. But that's me! I remember what would have happened to Thedas if his treachery had succeeded. Oh, and also attempted enslavement and apostasy. Whatever that is. 
Regardless, you are given several choices for how to deal with Alexius. You can imprison him, send him to work for the mages, execute him yourself, or, if you'd rather give him a fate worse than death, you can make him tranquil. The magic you wielded was beyond anything this world has ever seen and must never see again. Girion Alexius, I sentence you to tranquility. Tranquility, achieved by a magical rite, is essentially lobotomy for wizards, cutting off their connection to the magical force known as the Fade, making it impossible for them to dream, and destroying their emotional center, leaving them a husk of their former self, but still technically alive. I was too rebellious, like you. The Templars knew I had to be made an example of. If you were in any doubt as to this being the bad option, Alexius himself says that death would be preferable. Tranquility. So be it. Death would be preferable. And you get a war table operation called How Could You, where everyone yells at you for what a dick move this was. Uh, perhaps you didn't see he tried to assassinate me, the main character? Firm but fair, I think. Hello again. I... I have been exposed to a massive dose of substance, Adam. By the time you hear this, I will have armed this facility's defenses on Mars. You, my friend, must therefore penetrate them and kill me. Rapture, the underwater city from the first two Bioshock games, was founded as an objectivist utopia, where society's greatest minds could get together to create the perfect- oh, wait a second, everyone's gone mad on sea slugs and turned into crazed murderers. Never mind. I won't hurt ya! One such great mind was Gilbert Alexander, a Rapture scientist responsible for some of the greatest and most morally questionable scientific breakthroughs in Rapture, including the Alpha series Big Daddies and the pair bonding program with the Little Sisters. This way. Truly they are creating a brave new world, etc. Unfortunately for Gilbert, one of the experiments he agreed to be a part of was to see what happened if you exposed someone to way, way too much Adam, the gene-altering substance found in sea slugs that everyone in Rapture was taking way too much of already. The answer to what happens, as you've probably guessed, is nothing good. Whatever you may have seen inside the tank, that was indeed me. Old Gil is now a hideously mutated creature confined to a large glass tank, his mind split in two between his original personality, now stricken with remorse for his terrible actions, and Alex the Great, a cackling evil alter ego that somehow got in there. The important thing though is that you are given a choice. Once you've extracted Gil's genetic key, you can either electrify Gilbert's tank, killing him and putting him out of his misery, or if you want, you can leave him be. It's clear which choice the old Gilbert wants. Now, please, I ask you to grant me peace. Goodbye, my friend. However, it is also clear which choice the game considers to be the right one, as if you choose to put Gil out of his misery, you miss out on both the best ending and the saviour achievement you get for sparing all the sparable enemies and saving all the little sisters. But there's no doubt in my mind that by not electrifying Gil's tank, you are condemning him to a fate worse than death as he lives on in there for all eternity with his horrible alter ego as a twisted, mutated shadow of his former self. Notice to all employees, Subject Delta is hereby dismissed. Scott, from the Still, the achievement is worth 25G, so see you later, Gil. Have a good one. Okay, 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 listen. All right, new plan. Act natural, act natural, but nothing Hello! Oh, it's you. You know her? It's been a long time. How have you been? I've been really busy being dead. You know after you murdered me. You did what? Throughout the first Portal game, your constant companion is GLaDOS, the snarky AI with the sing-song voice who you come to realize is subtly trying to kill you. Thank you for participating in this amateur science computer-aided enrichment activity. Goodbye. Or, okay, sometimes it's not that subtle. By the end, GLaDOS is actively trying to throw you into furnaces and gun you down with sentry turrets, so when she starts filling the room you're in with deadly neurotoxin, I think you are justified in detaching her various personality cores and throwing them into an incinerator so that you can escape the Aperture Science Building with your life. As the song at the end of Portal goes to great lengths to explain, however, GLaDOS is not dead. In fact, she is... Still alive. 
Yes, thank you. It turns out that in the event of catastrophic failure, the last two minutes of her life are preserved for analysis, and as GLaDOS lets you know in no uncertain terms at the start of Portal 2, she was forced to relive her death over and over again for 15 straight years in between the two games. I was able, well, forced really, to relive you killing me again and again, forever. Which is, I think you'll agree, considerably worse than just dying the one time. Although maybe better than carrying on living as a potato. How are you holding up? Because I'm a potato. Bad times for GLaDOS all round, I'd say. Now, I know what you're thinking. Can I still rely on my swords and spells and sneaking and all that nonsense? Sure. Sure. Or you could use... The Wabachak! We covered a fate worse than death in Skyrim before, specifically the game's soul gems, which are magic crystals that trap a person's eternal soul so that they can eventually be used to slightly improve the performance of your gear. I'm sure they understand. Whoa, whoa. Dare dishonor the ah! Plenty of you in the comments, however, suggested that other existential crisis masquerading as a weapon in Skyrim, the notorious Wabajack. The Wabajack is a staff created by the Daedric Prince of Madness himself, Shegarath. As for you, a little mortal minion. Feel free to keep the Wabajack as a symbol of my... I'll just take the damn thing. And in keeping with a weapon designed by a literal god of madness, the Wabajack is what you could charitably describe as a little unpredictable, in that it dispenses powerful magic spells at random. Some of the spells it dishes out are totally capable of killing your enemies, sure. Where the fate worse than death situation comes in, however, is when the Wabajack transforms its victim into something else entirely, like, for example, a chicken. This one needs something. You might think being a chicken is still better than being dead, to which I would say, okay, fair enough. How about becoming a Danish pastry instead? And I think we have to assume that the Wabajack victim who has been transubstantiated into a delicious pastry remains sentient and aware in their helpless sweet roll form, hoping and praying that no one nearby gets peckish. Right, yes, like that. The story of bizarre puzzle game Katamari Damacy starts with the King of All Cosmos, a celestial being who looks like Daniel Day-Lewis and a Christmas cracker got into the teleporter from the fly, getting hammered and destroying all the stars in the sky in a drunken rampage. As the King's son, the Prince, this is somehow your problem and you're tasked with replacing these smashed supernovas with new celestial bodies made from any old junk you can find lying around on Earth, which you roll up using a sticky ball known as a Katamari. So far, so weird. Where it gets horrifying is when the ball gets larger and starts to pick up larger junk, including, but not limited to, actual human beings just trying to go about their day. Although the Katamari is large, it's clear that this is not fatal for the people who get rolled up, as you can tell from their frantic wiggling. Instead, they are now subjected to being buried in more and more layers of debris as the Katamari gets bigger and bigger until you reach the threshold at which it can be turned into a replacement star, at which point the king will fling it into space where it'll burst into a mass of flaming hydrogen, I guess. I don't know, if it were me, I'd hope I got run over by a pointy bit and got death over and done with. Those were just our recent favourites among the things you've done to your enemies that were much, much worse than just killing them and calling it a day. Did we miss your personal favourite? Let us know in the comments below, we won't judge you for having a favourite, and if you enjoyed this video, drop us a like on the way out. You could even subscribe to Outside Xbox for a video like this one every week. Wouldn't that be nice? Anyway, thanks for watching.